judge in the Karen Reed case is sealing for now the names of the jurors because one of them said they're frightened for their safety. Now, Karen Reed's defense team also filed another motion today saying that a fifth juror in this case has come forward saying that they did reach an agreement, a verdict on two of the three charges they were asked to deliberate on. Um, why don't counsel identify yourselves, please? Sure. Adam Lally for the Commonwealth, Your Honor. Sarah McLaughlin for the Commonwealth. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Timothy Bradle on behalf of uh, non-party Aiden Carney, who for the record is present in the courtroom. Hey, does Mr. Carney want to sit with you? I think he's okay right there. Okay. There is a huge difference between being charged with a crime and being found guilty. And Karen Reed did not do what they're saying she did. Prove me wrong. The replies to both of those statements alone should be more than enough to prove the point of this video. And Judge Bev's recent ruling causes a huge problem that I don't see a whole lot of people talking about. Plus, another juror has spoken. So welcome to the point. Let's get to it. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. When public passion interferes with civic duty, is that a problem? And what constitutes interference anyways? Because now all those jurors' names are sealed. So what exactly happened? Well, we now have a juror spending their own money to hire a lawyer so that they can ask Judge Bed to keep these names sealed for fear of that person's safety or the safety of their family. And I won't lie, my initial thought when I saw that headline was this is a bunch of bullcrap. I thought no one's being threatened here. And if fair coverage in an open conversation is something you prefer, subscribe to this channel and hit that like button down below. Because I was wrong thinking what I was thinking. There is a good chance here that person is legitimately scared. You can even see it online. No matter what side of this argument you try to take, someone's going to be upset with what you say or the points you're trying to make. And honestly, I can't blame anybody for being upset. The Commonwealth has failed to prove their case so far. Proctor suspended, Albert suspended, and the Canton Select Board meetings look like a pre-fight press conference. And Judge Bev sealing those names is an absolute huge problem. But first, who's mentioning online how all of this is partially Judge Bev's fault? She did mention the need for a protection order as one of her reasons to prevent these jurors from being bothered. And it was also her decision to let all these other people take the stand and make the case that this particular story has caused them to receive a lot of backlash online. And I'm pretty sure it was Jen who mentioned Turtle Boy specifically, being charged as well. Now I may be wrong about who said it, but I am also pretty sure somebody in that courtroom mentioned Turtle Boy's name and the charges he received. And the idea of being charged carries with it a stigma, mostly due to misinformation. Ladies and gentlemen, being charged and being found guilty are two separate things. And I know some people are shocked right now, but you all need to trust me, some people are pretty petty. And they want to drum up exaggerated claims to get other people in trouble. And you have other people who are in small towns who happen to have a whole lot of favor or their name may carry a lot of weight. And what they say may matter more and they may push or pressure law enforcement to do or say certain things that they wouldn't normally do. Dozens, dozens, if not hundreds. I, I, you know, there's so many I, I can't tell you. So Turtle Boy is just accused at this point. And Judge Bev shouldn't have let any of this come into the trial. Because the way it came in, it came in as if all these accusations were 100% factual and proven in court. And we will see how all this shakes out for Turtle Boy, but the point of this video is now one of those jurors wants absolutely nothing to do with this trial. And this is a huge problem because their potential unwillingness to participate could potentially be placing Karen Reed in double jeopardy. Especially since we now have a fifth juror saying she was not guilty of two of these three charges. And in my own unprofessional opinion, this is way too many jurors at this point to ignore. And we can't have at least one of these people coming into that courtroom if they hold a hearing and have them feel uncomfortable or have them feel unsafe. 
What if one of those jurors comes in? Because like I said, we do need to have a hearing on this to figure out how true it is. But they come in in a nervous moment and they answer a question not truthfully because at that moment they're so concerned that their name may get out or what they say may get out and they will receive a whole lot of backlash over it. To me, that is absolutely unacceptable. Now, I highly doubt that any of those jurors are going to watch this channel, but if one did, I'll tell you straight up, none of this is your fault. This is all law enforcement's fault. This is the prosecution's fault. My goodness, everybody, you can be mad at whoever you want. There's plenty of blame to go around in this particular story, but absolutely don't blame that jury. That's just toxic thinking, and it has no place within this conversation. We all want justice for John O'Keefe. But it isn't necessarily the jury's job to plug in these holes. It's the prosecution's job to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. Everyone needs to go to the Young Jerks YouTube channel and take a look at one of these Canton Select Board meetings. There are real reasons for these people to be upset. To watch how these meetings are handled is a complete joke in my own opinion, and I'm personally proud of the way those citizens in Canton have been protesting and exercising their freedom of speech the right way. Now let's be fair here though, if Judge Bev does hold a hearing and just one of those jurors comes up and says they voted guilty on one of these counts, we need to move it forward. At this point, we do not know for sure if all those jurors voted not guilty on two of those three counts. But because of some accusation, we won't have a way to ensure accountability either because those jurors' names are not going to be released. And they shouldn't, not right now, but they also shouldn't be sealed forever. Having those names released is the only way that we can ensure that one of those jurors wasn't in the bag for one side or the other as this trial was starting. Those names being released is how we ensure that jury was fair and impartial in their deliberations. We have checks and balances everywhere within our judicial system to ensure that every defendant has their right to a fair trial. It is way too easy for somebody to lie during the voir dire process. I'm not saying it happened here, I'm saying it has happened in the past. And if somebody is hiding some sort of bias, then the jury verdict is tainted. And I encourage everybody to listen to as many viewpoints as possible and formulate your own opinion based off what you're reading and what you're hearing. But let's lead the anger towards the jury out of this conversation. That is not how we will get justice for John O'Keefe. Y'all be safe now. Here and there I have noticed several people make mention that I am removing their comments from the comments section. This is an open discussion channel at the end of the day and it will always be an open discussion channel. So if you are offering an alternative point of view to the things I'm talking about, or you're offering an opposite point of view from what I just said, it is not me removing your comment. The best way I can explain to say what you're trying to say is say it as if there is a three-year-old around and you don't want them repeating what you're talking about. But it is not me removing your comments. And as long as you're doing that and you're being respectful to each other, YouTube should have no reason to remove what you're saying. Y'all are more than welcome to come at me with whatever you want, as hard as you want, as long as you're following those guidelines, and I'll still see it. But be respectful to each other. We're all just trying to figure these things out. And Voldemort's disease is a disease that shouldn't be named. Voldemort. I told you I was going to figure out a way to work it into this video, so technically I did. Y'all be safe now.